Blech. Here's the thing, though, and this is important to note. Howie was not stoked about this article when it came out. Howie saw that Legs posted this on Facebook and was not pleased and felt that things were taken out of context. I could see why. Like, these are really just sort of like um, pastiches um, of, of various stories. So this is a story Howie Pyro tells about robbing Johnny Thunders. The Blessed got really popular within the first year of us hanging out. And me, I'm working at Manic Panic, but uh, as every store opened in St. Mark's Place, punk became a big deal. I worked at Trash and Vaudeville and Defiant Pose and this store and that store. And when whenever a punk store opened up, they hired me. I was Mr. Punk Store Guy. So in 1978, when they got into a big, you know, Nick Berlin, our guitar player, was this crazy kid, and we were all fighting a lot, and he quit. We didn't know what to do. We were actually really popular at the moment, and we were just like, fuck, we're actually making money. Actually, you know what it is? I think this is why. No, no, no. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll say that's why they didn't do those gigs with the damned, but this was 78. Um, he says, and things were happening and we didn't know what to do. And as a joke, because Walter Lure was always around and he was our friend, we asked Walter to be in the blessed. And he said, yes, which was like, what are you fucking kidding me? So suddenly everything really changed for us. We had the guy from the heartbreakers in our band and then Johnny thunders. He was always so jealous so he'd have to come up and play with us. And then we became really, really popular after that when Johnny Thunders would play with us. In the 1980s, I was living in some place on 8th Street. Uh, I was with Eileen Kenley, different from the Ellen that... Wait, what? I Sorry. And I was with Ellen Kelly. Ken, uh, sorry, I like, can't read. I'm like really tired. In the 1980s, I was living with some people on 8th Street, and I was with Ellen Kenley, different from the Ellen that lived upstairs from Manic Panic. Uh, do you know who that is? Ellen Kenley was like an 80s supermodel or whatever. She's going to kill me for being so vague, but sorry. Anyway, we had no money. It was 1978 or 79, and Ellen had $5, and I had like nothing, and we walked to CBGB's. The same route we always walked, which was up Avenue A and across St. Mark's to First Avenue and then up Fifth Street where Kiev was and down the Kiev block the, uh, and then over to Seabees. So we got to Seabees and she's like, oh, my God, where's my money? I can't find my money, referring to her five dollars. And we're like, fuck, because they were pretty cheap about giving me drinks at CBGB. So I only needed five dollars. And I was like, we have to retrace our steps and find the five dollars if you dropped it i figured it would be the within the first half block or something because she was fiddling with her stuff while we were walking we wound up really retracing our steps and we get to the church on fifth street between first and second avenue or second and third avenues kev is on the other corner and we're just walking and looking and all of a sudden i see paper and there's like the church and there's like a locked fence where the cars are parked behind it and behind there i just noticed out of the corner of my eye a whole bunch of paper in the wind spinning around in a circle like a little tornado of paper i was like what is that and then i looked down and on the left side of the steps of the church there was this pile of money this giant pile of money and it's blowing into the parking lot and it's hundred dollar bills and Ellen boosted me over the fence, which is like spiky and very high. What's that TV show where you put where they put you in the glass booth and you grab the money? It was like that. There's hundred dollar bills blowing around and I'm grabbing them and shoving them down my pants and pulling them out of the air. And there's money everywhere. We still we start laughing and it was just completely insane. And we're just like, what the fuck is going on? So we took all of the money stuffed it down my pants and we went directly to cbgb's we gave a few people a few hundred dollar bills some of our friends who were just mystified by the whole thing then we went home and at the end of the night uh quite profitable so they made twelve thousand dollars an insane amount of money we were totally flipping out but the next day everyone was talking about oh my god did you see what happened did you see what happened did you see johnny thunders running down fifth street 
evidently what had happened was Johnny Thunders and Miss Connie Ramon, the girlfriend of Arthur Killer Kane and later Dee Dee Ramon, were getting high and Johnny knew about Connie's stash because she was a hooker and she had a lot of money and she stashed it in her apartment. She nodded out and he stole her life savings and she woke up and busted him, of course, because he's such a moron. And she flipped out and grabbed a giant butcher knife and was chasing him down the street. And all these people were in Kiev eating because that's where everybody ate since it was like a dollar to eat there. And everybody was like, oh, my God. The next day, everyone was talking about Connie chasing Johnny Thunders down the street with a butcher knife. And then me and Ellen are like, hmm. And we said nothing. Johnny must have ditched the money because Connie, Connie had caught him stealing it. She was she was crazy. She was really, really crazy. And she almost cut off Arthur Killer Kane's thumb because he she thought he was cheating on her. Or maybe she was, maybe he was cheating on her. Um, and then yeah, eventually she ended up with Dee Dee Ramon for a while and even had the surname Connie Ramon, right? Um Johnny must have ditched the money because Connie caught him stealing it. And he must have ditched the money in the church and it just started blowing out. It's so stupid. And we bizarrely came across this money and we were looking for our $5. It doesn't make any sense. This whole thing is insane, but we never said anything. I wanted my whole life while Johnny was alive. I wanted to ask him about it, but what the fuck? I never did find out from either one of them. And then they both died. And this was when my heroin how that and this was when my heroin habit seriously went into complete overdrive and I really had an endless supply of money for a really long time and I kept most of the money I guess Ellen took some I counted it sorry Ellen but I kept most of it for months and months and months maybe even a year I mean I don't know how long it lasted wow that's insane dude what an insane story and there's nothing more dangerous than having a habit and having a lot of money 